Hello everyone, this is Kisle from Edureka and today we'll be discussing about the Google Cloud certifications. Now, cloud trained professionals are in high demand and for a good reason. Understanding the how of cloud computing requires broad knowledge across a number of fields. So now, before we discuss about the certification, if you want to learn about the Google Cloud Platform and the various services it offers, you can go through the Google Cloud Playlist first, the link to which is in the description box below. So in total, there are four certifications offered by Google Cloud. We'll go through each one of them, learn what are the prerequisites and understand the roles and responsibilities that you need to master when you're attempting the certification exam. So let's have a look at the certifications. We have the Professional Cloud Architect, the Professional Data Engineer, G Suite Administrator, and the G Suite Exam. Now, let's get started with the Professional Cloud Architect. Cloud Architects oversees application and architecture development in cloud environments, including public cloud, private cloud, and any hybrid cloud. Additionally, Cloud Architects act as consultants to the organization, and they need to stay up to date to the latest trends and issues. Cloud architects may also be involved in legal areas of cloud computing by negotiating contracts and working alongside legal and procurement departments. Architects ensure service level agreement requirements are met. A professional cloud architect enables organization to leverage the Google Cloud technologies. With this certification, you can design, develop, and manage robust, scalable, and dynamic solution and administer application infrastructure and data solution on the Google Cloud technology. Now, coming on to the details of this certification exam, the duration of the exam is two hours and the format is multiple choice question and multiple select. The registration fee is $200. Now, you can start learning with the basic tutorials and also by practicing on Quick Labs. Now, Quick Labs is a very important term. It is a company which provides hands on lab learning with real time and real environments. It has a tie up with Google so you can practice all your code and all your real life scenarios there. Now coming on to the assessment and the syllabus part of this cloud architect exam, we have design and cloud solution architecture. So in this section of designing and planning a cloud solution architect, one should be good at designing a solution infrastructure that meets the business as well as technical requirements. It includes topics such as business use cases, product strategies, cost optimization, supporting the application design, some integration and few trade-offs. Now the designing work also comes with the designing of network storage and computing resources. There are some topics such as integration of on-premises with multi-cloud environments, identification of data storage needs and mapping to storage system and data flow diagrams. Now other key areas include creating a migration licensing mapping, network and management planning and testing and proof of concept. Now coming on to the section two, we have manage and provisioning cloud solution architecture. Now, one should be good at configuring network topologies, which include extending to on-premises or hybrid network, extending to a multi-cloud environment, some security features. He should know about the data protection. Now, other topics include configuring individual source storage systems, data storage application, data processing and compute processing, security and access management. Now, coming on to the third section, we have design for security and compliance. Now, it includes topics such as identity and access management, the cloud IM, data security, penetration testing, separation of duties, SOD, security controls, designing for legal compliance and legislation. Basically everything that is related to security comes under this section. Now the fourth section is analyzing and optimizing technical as well as business processes. Now it includes software development lifecycle plan, continuous integration and continuous deployment, the process of troubleshooting or post-mortem analysis structure, testing and validation, IT enterprise processes, stakeholder management, chain management, and decision making processes. Now, the fifth one is managing implementation. Advising development or operations team to ensure a successful development of the solution comes under this category. You need application development, testing frameworks, data, and system migration tools. Now, coming to the final section, we have ensuring a solution and operations reliability. In this section, we have the monitoring, logging, and altering of particular solutions and deployments, the deployment and release management, supporting operational troubleshooting, and evaluating quality control measures. Now coming on to our second certification exam, which is the professional data engineer. Now data engineer designs, builds, maintains, and troubleshoots data processing system with a particular emphasis on the security part. 
The reliability, fault tolerance, scalability, fidelity, and efficiency of such system are also handled by a professional data engineer. A data engineer builds massive reservoirs for big data. They develop, construct, test, and maintain architects such as databases, large-scale data processing systems. Once continuous pipelines are installed to and from these huge pools of filtered information, data scientists can pull relevant data sets for their analyses. The data engineer also analyzes the data to gain insights into business outcomes, build statistical models to support decision making, and create machine learning models to automate and simplify key business processes. A professional data engineer enables data driven decisions making by collecting, transforming, and visualizing data. The certification exam follows the same details and the same patterns that is, it is multiple choice and multiple select. It has a duration of two hours and the examination fee is $200. Now, coming on to the assessment and syllabus part of this professional data engineer certification. First of all, we have the building and maintaining data structures and databases. These include future advances in data technology, changes to business requirements, awareness of current state, and how to migrate the design to a future state, some data modeling, trade-offs, and schema design. The second part is designing data processing systems. Now the responsibility included in this section are batch and streaming deployment, transformation, acquiring and importing data, testing and quality control, connecting to a new data source, provisioning resources, monitoring pipelines and adjusting pipelines. The third section is analyzing data and enabling machine learning. Now this one is very important. In this we have data collection and labeling, data visualization, dimensionality reduction, data cleansing, normalization, defining success metrics, feature selection and engineering, algorithm selection, debugging a model, performance and cost optimization, and online dynamic learning. Basically, everything that a data scientist or a data analyst through machine learning comes under this section. Now, the fourth section is modeling business processes for analysis and optimization. Now, the responsibilities include mapping business requirements to data representation, optimizing data representation, data infrastructure, and performance and cost resizing and rescaling resources, data cleansing, distributed systems, high performance algorithms and common source of errors. The fifth section is designed for reliability. It includes responsibilities such as verification, building and running test suits, pipeline monitoring, accessing troubleshooting, and improving data representation and data processing infrastructure. It also includes processes such as recovering data, stress testing, data recovery plans, and processes. Now coming on to our sixth section, we have visualized data and advocate policy. It includes responsibilities such as building and selecting data visualization and reporting tools, some automation, decision and supports, data summarization, for example, translation up the chain, fidelity, trackability, and integrity. Now coming on to our final section, we have designing for security and compliance. It includes responsibilities such as identity and access management, data security, penetration testing, separation of duties, SOD, security control, and designing for legal compliance. The last section is common for both the certifications, that is the cloud architect and the professional data engineer. Now coming on to our next certification, which is the G Suite Administrator. A G Suite Administrator should be able to configure and manage all the aspects of a G Suite domain. This includes administering user, organizational units, groups, and access to services. The G Suite administrator should also be able to manage security of the G Suite domain as well as mobile policies. The Google Cloud Certified G Suite Administration exam measures the candidate on its individual ability to check and create, delete, and administer user for a domain, configure and manage organizational unity, and access to settings for G Suite services. Configure and manage mail delivery, routing, and filtering. Managing the mobile and Chrome devices with device management. And using reports to monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize the G Suite. Finally, there are configuring and managing security and privacy settings, and also the domains which are connected to your G Suite account. So, as of now, this certification is not available and is in beta phase. It will be available very soon by Google. Now, finally, coming to the G Suite certification. A Google Cloud certification in G Suite signals to employers your readiness to operate in today's modern work environment. By earning the G Suite certification, you can prove your ability to use cloud based tools to create and share documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and files. 
This exam objectively measures an individual's ability to work, communicate, and manage tasks using G Suite comprehensive productivity and collaboration tools in the workplace. The Google Cloud Certified G Suite exam verifies proficiency in key features of the G Suite platform, which include the Google Drive, Gmail, Hangout Meets, Google Docs, Google Sheets, and the Google Slides. The certification is of two hours and the format is multiple choice, and it is also performance based. The cost for the certification is $75. Now that you have an idea of all the certifications which are offered by the Google Cloud, it is up to you which type of certification you want to opt to move forward with your career, be it the Cloud Architect or the Cloud Data Engineer, the G Suite Administrator or the G Suite. Certainly, the Cloud Architect has a more importance in terms of certifications as compared to other if you are looking forward to working in Cloud Computing Department. So that's it, guys. Thank you for listening to this video. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!